Hi, gorgeous soul. Thank you so much for dropping by with your curiosity to find out more about the ancient sciences of Ayurveda and yoga or whatever else is on your mind today. I'm Donna Williams and I'm your guide for what, for now, I'm still calling the UM podcast because who knows where this will go or if it really even is a podcast. Think of our time together today more as a dose of mind expansion, a moment of connection combined with my top tips to feel fabulous and live a life you love. I've been and am so many things in this lifetime so far. I'm sure I'll be a whole lot more other things before I leave this earth, including a sports scientist. I'm a teacher of yoga. I am a expert in Ayurveda, and I'm also a longtime humanitarian, as well as a whole lot of other things, including being dog mama to my little Aussie shepherd, Booty Heart. So today is a long promised episode about the ancient Ayurvedic concept of Dinacharya. Loosely translated, this means daily routine, which I personally don't love that word because it sounds kind of boring. Another way of saying it is the daily self-care that we use to keep ourselves well. It's a little bit different from sadhana, A daily practice of sadhana, which often involves things like meditation and yoga, breath work, maybe sound work, is more about a regular spiritual practice. Whereas in Ayurveda, Dinacharya is something that is more lifelong and designed to keep us well throughout our day, throughout our evening, and also throughout throughout our lives. So, One of the ways that I like to think about Dinacharya is as the container for our life. So if you think about pouring a glass of water onto a bench and you just watch the water literally pour out of the glass and run all over the countertop and down the sides of the countertop. Like there's no way for you to pick the water up or contain the water or put it back into the glass. It's just running all over the place. For me, that's what life feels like when I don't have Dinacharya, when I don't have a set of practices that I use regularly to keep myself well, whereas if you think of, and instead of thinking of a really boring jar, think of um, a very, very beautiful, maybe an ancient vase or some kind of vessel that you have in your home, um, crystal maybe, that you really love. And think of that as um, a beautiful container to wrap your life in. That's the way I like to think about a dinacharya, because when we talk about the English words daily routine, sometimes that has a heaviness to it or feels like like a, a chore. And I think of Dinacharya as something more as an investment, a nourishment that actually keeps our lives well and us feeling fabulous within our own life. So in Dinacharya, there are, from an Ayurvedic perspective, there are two sort of cycles. And we always say that the Dinacharya begins the night before. So it's not like you wake up every morning and that's the start of your daily routine. Your routine actually begins the night before. And if you think about it, it's very true. How we sleep, how we rest or how we don't sleep or don't rest are critical to also how we wake up and spend the next day. So if we can begin our routine or if we can can begin designing the container of our life the evening before, then we have a much better chance of having a beautiful day. And so whatever you do the night before should be something that is going to help you obtain rest, help you sleep, help nourish you, and help you wake up and feel like you have an amazing day ahead of you. And then how you spend your morning once you've woken up should also be the day, the same thing for the day, setting yourself up for the day ahead. And this can be many, many, many different things. What I like to tell people is to have a look at the routines that you already have in place. And they don't have to be things like 5 a.m. yoga or um, any kind of elaborate sleep ritual. They can be things that you already do. So one of the most common things that people do in some way, shape or form is to pray or have some kind of religious um, ceremony, whether that is a small act of prayer, saying grace um, over dinner, um, filling out your gratitude journal before you go to sleep. These are all things that many, many people do in their lives already. So rather than make yourself a long list of 
new things that you have to do. It's really beautiful to just take an audit of the routines that you have in your life and to notice whether they support you or not. Because guess what? There's a whole bunch of daily routines we probably all have that don't support us, like too much social media, staying up too late, eating a heavy meal before you go to bed, or drinking three cups of coffee before you eat any food. (laughs) So think about the things that actually already make you feel amazing and great throughout your evening and throughout your day. And those can already be your dinacharya, your self-care for a beautiful evening and a beautiful day. That's a great start. If there are things that you do regularly that feel like they deplete you or don't serve you, then you are so welcome to delete those from your life or to at least minimize those in some way with no judgment attached to that. You know you, you do you, and you will absolutely know what serves you and nourishes you and what depletes you. So I let you make an assessment of that for yourself and think about potentially replacing some of the things that deplete you with something that nourishes you more strongly. So in Dinacharya and in Ayurveda, we would say that the evening before is good to eat early, to take some light exercise, maybe just to walk around the block or something after you eat, to have some kind of gratitude practice, whether that's formal prayer or just a gratitude journal or just, you know, saying um, your things that you're thankful for over the dinner table with your family, something that kind of allows you a moment of reflection for your day um, that has passed and can ease you into sleep. Some people like to read. Um, Screen time is definitely considered to be stimulating from a physiological perspective. So anything that is not to do with your screen is usually uh, a much better choice. Um, We also say in Ayurveda, things that decrease the temperature um, are going to help you sleep and rest better as well. So having a shower, it doesn't have to be, or a bath, it doesn't have to be a cold shower or a cold bath, but washing yourself before you go to bed um, decreases the temperature. If you're not feeling Feeling particularly relaxed or grounded, you can rub uh, some oil on your feet, maybe um, very light coconut oil, or use some calming essential oils like lavender and such to sort of calm you before you go to sleep. That's also helping you to connect to the earth, which is where you're going to rest while you're sleeping. So these are all beautiful Ayurveda practices that you can use before you go to bed. So using your Dinacharya the night before. And when you wake up in the morning, Think about what it is that nourishes you, what makes you feel good, what, and they might not be things that you're doing every day, but you may have had moments in your life where you're like, oh, I loved it when I used to do that routine, or I loved it when I used to, you know, just sit on the balcony with my coffee before doing anything. So think of the things that nourish you. Generally speaking, in Ayurveda, we say that eating something before you actually have some kind of stimulating beverage like coffee or tea caffeine um, is definitely better for the digestive system. Um, Any way you can get sun on your face or be outside is also very good for you. But some movement, some breath work, again, these can be very small things. You don't need to do a 90 minute yoga class before you go to work every morning. Um, It might just be five minutes, a few sun salutations, a little bit of breath work or meditation maybe the morning is the time that you remind yourself of all the things and all the people that you're grateful for but having some kind of routine that feels like it's filling you up and maybe as simple as setting an intention for the day or ahead how you would like your day to go or calling in the kind of support that you need to have an amazing day So these are just examples. There are a thousand different things that you can do. And I think that the easiest way to create a Dinacharya for yourself is to make sure that there are routines and self-care practices that feel right for you and that you connect with. Any kind of ritual that feels like it's important for you is usually one that's going to be easier to take part in every day. And the other thing is that your Dinacharya doesn't have to say this day the same every single day and every single night. You can change it with the seasons. You can change it depending on what's going on in your life, um, where you are, if you're traveling to a different part of the world. Um, It's great not to change it every day because otherwise it's not really a routine, but some level of consistency with seasonal changes is a great way to look at it. And rather than obsessing over like, oh my God, I haven't done this or I haven't done that, it's okay to just keep 
that broad container of self-care to support your life and to hold your life within that. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about Genitaria or you'd like to know more about what kind of self-care practices are right for you, because in Ayurveda, we say that everybody has a very specific constitution based on the different elements of uh, the planet. So um, things like earth, water, fire, air, and space, and different types of self-care practices work better depending on the mix of elements that you have individually within yourself. If you would like any more information on that, you can always reach out to me. I do one-on-one well-being consultations, and I that includes Ayurveda consultations to help you find out what your dosha is and to help you set up your own dinacharya. The other thing that I have available is a beautiful on-demand course called Rest, a course in chill. And this has three different modules to it, including an Ayurveda yoga practice at the end as a bonus. But one of the modules is very specifically on Ayurveda. And the other module is um, around ritual and creating rest rituals in your life. And that's available on my website at emergencyyoga.org. So that's the word emergency. O-G-A, so emergency yoga with one Y, emergencyyoga.org. I am a big fan of Dinacharya. I'm absolutely not a big fan of being completely militant about my self-care and my daily routine, but I am very, very, how can I say it? I'm very committed to Dinacharya because I've tried life without Dinacharya, and I can tell you that I definitely rest better and feel better when I have um, a fairly solid self-care routine. So what that looks like for me at the moment, just to give you some real-time talk, is I go to bed between 10 and 10.30, I usually go to sleep or I definitely go to sleep before 11, but I try to wind down and have a shower before I go to bed. I read a book. I um, write the things that I'm grateful for. and Also, my wins of the day. I have a fantastic journal called Today Well Spent, which I highly recommend you um, have a look at. It's called Today Well Spent, and it's not a journal by dates or days. Um, it's a journal that you can use anytime. So I kind of talk about my wins for the day, what I was grateful for that day, where I connected etc. Um, and that's my kind of evening routine. And my morning routine is really based around more of a sadhana practice. So I do a bit of yoga, I do some pranayama, I do some meditation. Sometimes I play the gong, sometimes not. I always do um, tongue scraping and uh, coconut oil pulling as well, just because that's really good for my throat. And it's really good for everybody's throat, actually. Um, obviously, I take my little doggo out. So, you know, there's some some fairly solid routine and self-care practices. And I've tested them over many, many years. And I can tell you that I am a better person to be around when I have my dinacharya in place, even though they may change loosely within that broader container of my life. So I love to hear from you what nourishes you, what self-care routines fill you up. Um, what are you maybe going to delete from your life? What feels depleting and not nourishing for you? And if you need any help, send me a message at Donna at emergencyyoga.org and I would love to hear from you. I'm wishing you the most amazing day, remembering that your day starts the night before. And if you need any help at all, remember you can always email me, Donna at emergencyyoga.org and I am going to see you for the next unpodcast very, very soon. Namaste.